Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is in honor of Squirrel Appreciation Day. Squirrel Appreciation Day is celebrated on January 21st every year and was created in 2001 to acknowledge the contribution that squirrels make to the environment. It is estimated that over a billion oak trees are planted by squirrels worldwide when they bury acorns to eat later and then forget where they have buried them, leaving them to sprout. In North America, there are a variety of squirrel species, which include the Eastern Gray and the American Red Squirrels. If you live somewhere you can see squirrels, you're invited to celebrate this holiday. On this day, you can head out into the woods, or at least to your local park, to look for your favorite types of squirrels, and leave out seeds and nuts for these adorable rodents. If you snap any photos of squirrels, post them to Twitter and Facebook, and if you do, make sure that you use the hashtag Squirrel Appreciation Day so people around the world can check out your pictures. And now, on to some facts about these wonderful rodents. Squirrels are indigenous to the Americas, Eurasia, and Africa, and were introduced by humans to Australia. The earliest known fossilized squirrels date from the Eocene Epoch, and among other living rodent families, the squirrels are most closely related to the mountain beaver and to the dormice. There are 265 species of squirrels. Squirrels are members of the family Scuridae, a family that includes small and medium-sized rodents. The squirrel family includes tree squirrels, ground squirrels, chipmunks, marmots, including groundhogs, flying squirrels, and prairie dogs, among other rodents. Squirrel taxonomy reads as follows. They belong to the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Chordata, the class Mammalia, the order Rodentia, the suborder Scyromorpha, the family Scyridae, and there are many different subfamilies and 21 genera and 265 species. Most people are familiar with tree squirrels, but there are three main categories of squirrels. Tree squirrels, ground squirrels, and flying squirrels. These three categories are further broken down into many squirrel types, such as albino, mountain tree, antelope, spotted, gray, American red, fox, pygmy, northern flying, Southern, Arizona Gray, Idaho, Arctic Ground, Alberts, Franklin, Richardson, Rock, White, and Black. Squirrels are generally small animals, ranging in size from 3 inches, like the African pygmy squirrel, to 4 feet like the Indian giant squirrel. Several marmot species can weigh 18 pounds or more. They typically have slender bodies with bushy tails and large eyes. Their fur is usually soft and silky with variable coat colors. In most squirrel species, the hind limbs are longer than the forelimbs and all species have either four or five toes on each paw. Their paws include a poorly developed thumb 
and have soft pads on the undersides to help cushion their landings. Their longer hind limbs enable them to jump as far as 20 feet. They're even able to run up to 20 miles per hour. They have sturdy claws for grasping and climbing. Tree squirrels are able to descend a tree headfirst because they can rotate their ankles 180 degrees, which enables the hind paws to point backwards and grip the tree bark from the opposite direction. Although they do not actually fly, flying squirrels spread the muscle membrane between their legs and body and glide on the air. Flaps of skin connecting limbs to body provide a wing-like surface. This enables them to glide up to 160 feet, making it look like they can fly. Squirrels have an excellent sense of vision and touch. Their eyes are high on their head and placed on each side of the head so they can see a large amount of their surroundings without having to actually turn their head. They have vibrissae on their limbs and heads. Vibrissae is a fancy word for whiskers. Like other rodents, squirrels have four incisor teeth that never stop growing so they don't wear down from the constant gnawing. These teeth grow about six inches every year. In fact, the word rodent actually derives from the Latin rodere, which means to gnaw. They have cheek teeth for grinding that are set back behind a wide gap in their mouths. The bushy tail of a squirrel has a few purposes. They use it to keep rain and wind off their bodies and to cool off when it's hot outside by pumping more blood into it. It's used as a counterbalance when jumping about and through trees and as a parachute when jumping. Squirrels also use it to communicate and signal with other squirrels. Unfortunately, Squirrel tails are also commonly used in many fishing lures for fly fishing. Although squirrels are perceived as herbivores, eating mostly nuts, seeds, conifer cones, fruits, and fungi, they're actually situational omnivores, meaning that they predominantly eat a wide variety of plants, but will also eat meat when faced with hunger. On average, squirrels eat about a pound of food per week. Flying squirrels eat nuts and fruit, but also catch insects and even baby birds. Tree squirrels do come to the ground in search of fare such as nuts, acorns, berries, and flowers. They also eat bark, eggs, and baby birds. Tree sap is a delicacy to some species. Ground squirrels eat nuts, leaves, roots, seeds, and other plants. They also catch and eat small insects and caterpillars. Some tropical squirrel species have adapted to eat a diet almost entirely of insects. Most squirrels get bulky to stay warm during the winter. To prepare for cold months, squirrels will bury their food. That way, in the winter months, they have a store of food that they can eat when supplies are scarce. Squirrels live in almost every habitat, from tropical rainforest to semi-arid deserts. They avoid only the high polar regions and the driest of deserts. They like the same habitats that I do. <laughs> Tree squirrels are the types most commonly recognized, 
often seen gracefully scampering and leaping from branch to branch. Tree squirrels make their homes in the trees, but also find their nesting materials and food, both on the ground and above. They typically live in wooded areas, but are seen in parks and backyards, countrysides and cities all over the world. They have grown accustomed to feeding in backyard feeders, and have even been seen snatching food from people's hands. Ground squirrels live in burrows or tunnel systems, where some hibernate during the winter. Flying squirrels live like birds do, in nests or tree holes that are built into the crooks of branches. Ground squirrels and tree squirrels are usually diurnal, active during the day, or crepuscular. This means that they are only active at dawn and dusk. Flying squirrels tend to be nocturnal, except for lactating mothers and their young, which have a period of diurnal activity during the summer. Since squirrels are such small mammals, they're often a little jumpy and on edge. Ground squirrels are social and live in well-developed colonies. Groups of ground squirrels are known as a scurry or a dray. They work together to warn each other of approaching danger with a whistling call. You can look up this call if you type in prairie dog call. I used to have three prairie dogs, and they would sometimes make this whistling call whenever they were scared. Tree squirrels are more solitary and rely on their ability to jump from tree to tree to evade predators. Squirrels are very territorial and will fight to the death to defend their area. Mother squirrels are the most vicious when defending their babies. Aggressive and predatory behavior has been observed in various species. Groups of squirrels have killed and eaten mice, chickens, snakes, and lizards. And there is one documented incident of a group killing and eating a stray dog. There have also been attacks on humans, although this is typically rare. Squirrels don't seem to let their small size stand in their way. Squirrels may even become more aggressive due to shortages of food or from wanting to protect their homes. It's not uncommon to see an anxious squirrel looking around in every direction for enemies before burying their nuts and seeds in a hiding spot for later. Squirrels may lose 25% of their buried food to thieves. They try to prevent this by using the deceptive caching method. This is where a squirrel digs a hole and vigorously covers it up again, but without depositing the food. <laughs> Maybe that's where the term squirrely comes from. I don't know. Squirrels are highly intelligent problem solvers, and studies have shown that they can even remember the solutions to puzzles for up to two years. Unfortunately for squirrels, they often forget where they have hidden their stash. Scatter hoarders, which are squirrels with multiple caches of food, have a difficult time keeping an eye on all their hidden food. Fellow squirrels and birds often take advantage of this free meal. Squirrels can even smell food stashes beneath a foot of snow. Food is important during the cold winter months for squirrels, so it makes sense that they'd be able to smell the food under the snow. When a squirrel finds food, they will then dig a tunnel under the snow following the scent to their buried treasure. Squirrels live about 5 to 10 years in the wild, and can live 10 to 20 years in captivity. Many juvenile squirrels die within the first year of life. Premature death may be caused 
when a nest falls from a tree and the mother may abandon her young if their body temperature is not correct. Their mating seasons typically begin in late winter around the end of February and at the end of spring. The first mating season lasts until May and the second lasts until late summer. The female will give off a scent that the males pick up. Once a male catches her scent, he will begin to chase her through the trees. If multiple males are interested, it makes for impressive acrobatics throughout the trees. The female will choose the strongest male to mate with. Squirrels mate like most mammals do, and once they mate, the male and female part ways and the female takes care of the babies, and they will never mate with each other again. She will carry her young for a gestation period of 29 to 65 days, depending on the size of the species. Smaller squirrels have shorter gestation periods. Mothers give birth to two to eight offspring at one time. Newborn squirrels are about an inch long, and they're called kits or kittens. They're born blind, fur-free, and toothless. And they totally depend on their mothers for around two to three months. After seven to ten weeks, the young are weaned, and when the kits leave the nest, they typically don't travel farther than two miles from home, and they become sexually mature by the end of the first year. Some species of squirrel have new litters every few months or as little as twice per year. While making this video, I learned that there is a decline of the red squirrel population in the UK. And this has resulted in a controversial cull on gray squirrels. It was mistakenly believed that the eastern gray squirrel was destroying the red squirrel population. However, scientific research has amounted to dispel this myth, showing that the main reason for the red squirrel decline is due to traffic, human activity, and a diminishing biodiversity caused by climate change. There was also a huge destruction of red squirrel habitats after World War II for agricultural reasons. Recent research has since demonstrated the neutral and very often positive environmental effect of gray squirrels. The red squirrel is not as versatile in terms of diet as the gray squirrel and they have not adapted well to vegetation changes which have resulted in support for the coal. Supporters justify it by claiming the eastern gray squirrel is an invasive species, but it should be noted that gray squirrels were originally imported for ornamental purposes, but have now acclimated. Red squirrels can be helped by planting conifer forest, establishing them on islands, and supplementary feeding. We find a similar argument used in British Columbia, Canada, where the native red squirrel decline is blamed on the gray squirrel. Emily Gonzalez, a professor at the University of Victoria and restoration specialist at Parks Canada, has refuted these points and shown that both the red and gray squirrel populations of British Columbia are important for the environment and should be respected equally as they can cohabitat peacefully together. Another damaging myth for the gray squirrel was that they caused the bird population to decline but it's since been shown that predation by red squirrels is higher than greys, who utilize a greater variety of seeds than reds. This negative myth was dispelled in 2009 by a study of urban birds. 
and bringing it back to the original reason why we have Squirrel Appreciation Day. We have to remember why squirrels are important. Squirrels are considered forest regenerators who help with biodiversity. Scientific studies conducted by researchers from Wilkes, Princeton, and Purdue universities have shown that the unrivaled leaders in seed dispersion and in forest regeneration are gray squirrels. By helping squirrels thrive, you can help increase the amount of flora in your area. One way you can help them is by living a vegan lifestyle. According to the International Union for the Conservation of Nature's Red List, the following species are endangered. The San Joaquin Antelope Ground Squirrel the Woolly Flying Squirrel, Sephora Flying Squirrel, Mintawi Flying Squirrel, Sibirut Flying Squirrel, Smoky Flying Squirrel, Vincent's Bush Squirrel, Baja California Rock Squirrel, Idaho Ground Squirrel, Perotti Ground Squirrel, and the Fraternal Squirrel and Mern Squirrel and the Namdafa Flying Squirrel is critically endangered. Since so many species are threatened by habitat loss and since animal agriculture is the main culprit for the destruction, adopting a vegan lifestyle greatly decreases your impact on squirrel habitats. You can also help by not buying squirrels as pets, which funds the illegal wildlife trade. And finally, you can join the fight against squirrel poaching and smuggling. You'll have to check with your local wildlife commissions on how to get started with that. Please do not try to relocate squirrels to a more rural area. Studies have shown that 97% of relocated squirrels die shortly after or disappear from the area. Squirrels, like pigeons and other fauna, are synanthropes, meaning they benefit and thrive from their interaction in human environments. This gradual process of successful interaction is called synurbanization, wherein squirrels lose their inherent fear of humans in an urban environment. Since many species have made their homes in cities, you can help squirrels by making your backyard squirrel friendly. Many people leave out a bird bath or a small shallow dish filled with water for squirrels because squirrels are always in need of, of a clean source of water. You can also leave out a variety of nuts and seeds for the squirrels in your backyard. Some people also plant a variety of trees and shrubs to give squirrels in their backyard cover and food sources that they need. Some of these trees and shrubs include oaks, pines, hazelnut bushes, and smooth sumac trees. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned a few things about squirrels that you didn't already know. I enjoyed making it, and I hope you'll catch my next video as well. Take care, and go vegan for the animals.